Hello guys, welcome back with another video with Linksy. Hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be looking and talking about the best DLCs for Total War Warhammer. And of course, when talking about the best DLCs for Total War Warhammer, you have to have a discussion about the glory of the Call of the Beastmen. The most impressive, the strongest, the most staunch of factions that was added to the game. Without it, you cannot really enjoy the game. And also, if you play this as your first campaign, you'll probably not play uh, Total War Warhammer again. Because the Beastmen, as great as they were in, in Total War 1, need a massive update. And I am praying, and I am praying that is the case, that they are going to be the next update uh, to the Old World factions. And uh, so let's pray together to Sigmar or whatever Chaos God you pray to or Elven God or whatever God you pray to that we need them to have a little bit of an update. But while we wait for them to get an update, let's talk about the top five DLCs. None other than one of my favorites, The Rise of the Tomb Kings. This is, in my opinion, one of the best works that CA have produced. It also signifies a change in um, attitude of the game itself, as in the DLCs became something else, something more. Rather than an addition to the game, they get, became something of their own uh, selves. Like they are more than just um, a small expansion. This is a full-on new faction. It has its unique mechanics, the love and care given to the uh, DLC is just absolutely unbelievable. The uh, you know the Tomb Kings themselves are just absolutely gor gorgeous models, really cool mechanics, unique for any Total War faction I've ever seen, and it just adds so much more. You have the Shopti as you can see here, which just <laughs> massacre everything. Um, you have the Realm of Souls. You have their economy, their cities, their own unique. Um, campaign mechanics and their, their own unique storyline and I think it is a really good DLC just for that reason if you're looking at you've played War, Warhammer quite a bit and you're looking to try uh, something new this would be it uh, this would as in something new in the game itself this would be the uh, DLC I would recommend it, it is a DLC that just gives new perspective and uh it, it I, th I i do believe it is worth uh the, the cost and uh, with that let's go to number four number four would be the queen and the crone and this is because well in my opinion it completes both the dark elves and the uh, high Elves. It adds the Sisters of Avalorn for the High Elves, it adds the Supreme Sorcerer's Lord for the Dark Elves, and that makes uh, both factions all the more better. Of course, the High Elves in this case with Alariel benefit more, but I think this is one of those factions that just rebalances the uh, DLC, sorry, that rebalances the game to a certain extent and gives um, that extra flavor. It's something that if you especially like the High Elves and especially like the Dark Elves, you'd want to get as it does make the game much better in that regard. Um, but yeah, yeah, with that, well, let's go to number three. You cannot really talk about DLCs in Warhammer Total War without first looking at uh, and mentioning and talking about Bretonia. It is an entire faction that was basically given out for free and all of their updates subsequent, including the Rapan's DLC, uh, FLC, came out as F F F FLC, not as a DLC. But I think it's something to be mentioned as a Bretonia is one of the strongest factions in the game. It is something that a lot of people love to play, uh, very relatable uh, to most of us who love fantasy and have played lots of medieval fantasy games, because, you know, it's knights in armor, uh, serving the Lady of the Lake, uh, in this case, so this, the Arthurian legend, a little bit in there as well. So definitely something to look at. It has unique mechanics, unique, unique units. It's the only faction in the game that does not have supply lines. So something to look at. But uh, yeah, that, I mean, there's you're going to lose nothing in getting this DLC. To have the full uh, flavor of it, you need to have both Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2. But it's definitely something to enjoy. Number two. 
So number two, and well, frankly, it's not even number two. It's almost tied up with number one is, of course, the Warden and the Punch. It is one of, it was one of and is still one of the best DLCs the game has gotten. It has added so much. It was really anticipated and really requested by a lot of fans as it brought the green screen update as well. It gave us Grom, the Punch, who is one of the most beloved lords in the game itself. He is very fun to play with. He is the bringer of a lot of new things, to be honest. Lots of new faction mechanics for the um, orcs. The cauldron is something just absolutely beautiful to use in game. Um, adds a lot of unique units. And then you also have the high elf update with Altarion, which gives you lots of uh, new units for the high elves as well, and balances the high elves a little bit, gives the high elves uh, more magic and more power in that regards, but also um, you know, you have the River Troll Hags, which is one of my favorite hero types, as we can see it there, and Arcane Phoenix. So it's quite fun, and honestly, it ties up for first place, but it's still not just as good as the first one, which I would say is... None other than the Prophet and the Warlock. This... Update brings rattling guns, warlock jezails. It has nukes in it. Everything you can dream of. It's the best Skaven DLC, and by far, in my opinion, is the best DLC in the game. It's not as polished as other DLCs that recently came out, but it definitely added a lot of flavor to the game. I like. I still remember playing Skaven without this DLC. And the difference was absolutely incredible. Uh, Ikid Claw's campaign is the most fun I've ever had in the game. Uh, he's just crazy. And apart from Ikid Claw, you also get the, uh, the Prophet, which is uh, Tahenuin. And Tahenuin has, you know, the Cult of Sotek, which is an incredible uh, faction as well. Does not receive as much love as, of course, Ikid Claw did. And this is something we notice with the, mo the latest DLC is both. Uh, parts of the DLC get just as much love. Of course, the uh, lizards didn't need to have that much given to them because they were already incredibly strong, but this caven needed those weapon teams desperately to uh, bolster their defenses and the bolster their, their attack force. And uh, yeah, this is what I believe is the must-have DLC. But of course, this is my opinion, ladies and gentlemen. You guys could think some other DLCs are more important. You know, the Twisted and the Twilight is an incredible DLC as well. It just came out. Another one I would like to mention is the King and the Warlord, which just, uh, you know, polishes up the... Uh, the uh, dwarves, and uh, one of my personal favorites. And uh, there are so many more. The Vampire uh, Coast is just beautiful. But I am a Skaven dude, and will always be. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!